Apple just released the new Apple Row feature to their camera application, and this is the most important feature before the end of 2020. Let me show you why. One morning we woke up and we went to an epic location to meet the sunrise. And that's the picture I took with my camera, that's the JPEG. To be able to see the sky, I had to underexpose everything, but everything is extremely dark. And that is the reason why you shoot in RAW, because if you shoot with the JPEG, you are never able to see what is in the shadows. After editing the RAW image, here is the result. See how beautiful is that image? You can see everything. You can see the face of the model. You can see all the grass. And here on the left corner, you can even read the sign what is written Bali. Let me show you back the JPEG. Here everything is dark. You can't read anything. Till now, all the mobile phones had the HDR capabilities and the HDR was fighting with the amazing quality of the camera. Here is an HDR photo from my iPhone 11. As you can see, the shadows are really nicely exposed, the sky is exposed nicely, but still the model is quite in shadow, but the image is workable. But now, Apple released the Apple RAW to their phones. So now you can take RAW images with your phone. That means that you can extract so much more information from the image. And if you work with programs like Lightroom Mobile, you'll be able to do miracles with those images. Now, let me show you the reason. Let's open Photoshop. Here on top, I have 8-bit image. All the JPEGs are shot in 8 bits. Down under, I have 16-bit image. The RAW images from the camera are 14 bits. The RAW images from the iPhone are 12 bits. It's not as much as the camera, but 12 bits is a lot of information. Now, let me show you why that is so important. Now, here we'll just add levels. The levels is just adjustment layer with which you can darken or lighten. We'll put the blacks to be gray, 110, and the lights, we'll make them gray as well, 148. Let's hide it. So our image became more or less grayish. Here on the left side is a little bit darker gray, and on the left side is a little bit lighter gray. Now let's add one more adjustment layer. And now we'll darken the gradient the same way. 110, 148. Apply. And if you notice, our 8-bit image became really pixelated. From very smooth gradient, it became very choppy. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see it more clearly. Now, let's do exactly the same with the 16-bit image. To save time, I can just copy, copy paste the layers. So here is the top layer. So here is the first layer. It converted the image to consistent gray. And when we revert it, the gradient is nice and smooth. The reason that is happening is because you work with more data. When you work with 8-bit image, you don't have enough data to recover the shadows. And when you work with 16-bit image, you have so much more data and you can recover the shadows and the image will look smoother and you have less noise. Now let's jump to Lightroom and edit the Apple RAW photos. I'm so excited. I didn't edit them till now. That's the first time I'll touch them. So here I took two photos. That is the JPEG and that is the RAW. Here is very similar situation. It's a sunrise. We have really strong shadows. And the second photo is at night. So let's start editing and try to make the exposure beautiful. The first thing I'll do is to bring the shadows up. Like that, I'll bring the details. Okay, now you can see my face better. Okay, let's bring the shadows maximum. And let's bring the highlights down. Like that, we'll bring the detail from the sky. From here, I'll bring the lights a little bit up. And then I'll bring the blacks a little bit down. To make myself more pretty, I would use a radio filter because otherwise I'll push the whole image too much. So let's create one radio filter and place it over myself. So now we can bring the shadows even more back. Let's bring the highlights a bit up, fix the contrast. Now, there is one trick here you can apply to your photos when you bring something back from the shadows. The first thing you should know is that when you have shadows and you recover them, uh, all the details in the shadows are less saturated. So you have to bring the saturation a little bit up. And because it's sunrise, the light is very warm. So I'll push the temperature a little bit towards the warm. Like that, my face will have really nice color. Let's push it too much, just a little bit. 
and then let's find the saturation here it is down let's bring the saturation now let's go back to edit the whole image now if you scroll down you'll find the temperature tab and the main advantage of shooting raw is that you are able to change the color temperature of the whole image and you have tremendous control about the colors. Just check the slider, right now it's at 5750 kelvins. We can push it to the left, now we'll make it really bluish or we can push it to the right. Let's reset it. If we go to the JPEG image, you don't have that control. You can still play with the temperature but you're ruining the colors. So you cannot use the temperature slider as much as you can use it with the raw image. And that's something professional photographers use a lot. When I shoot my images on sunrise or on sunset, I like to make them more warm. So I push it to at least 6,000, maybe 6,500. Yeah, let's do it 6,500. Usually when you film sunrise or sunset, um, the sky is more orangey, pinkish. So you can play also with the tint. You can push it more towards the purples, but not too much. Just now let's go to my favorite thing, the color mixer. Now the first thing here, we can play with my jacket. I will definitely lighten my jacket. It looks so much better. We can boost a bit the saturation and we can boost the hues. And then we can push the red a little bit towards the orange. Let's check what we can do with the oranges. Let's push a little bit the saturation, just a tad, and bring the luminosity a little bit down, maybe five, seven. Definitely the yellows are a little bit too harsh, so we can bring the luminosity down, and we can push the yellows towards the orange. Now let's touch the blue. I'm really not sure what should I do with the sky. Should I bring it more down or should I bring it more up? Yeah, I'll bring it a little bit down. If you push the blue to the left, you go to the teal color. And that's how you create teal and orange. If you push it to the left, you're going more to the purple. But I'll keep it in the middle. Now let's copy the settings and apply them to the JPEG and compare the difference between the two images. And see how much more that image can handle than the JPEG. So, Command C, settings copied, and then Command V. And now, as you can see, Exactly the same settings are destroying the JPEG because the JPEG doesn't have enough information. Let's just check the ground here. Check the stones and how everything is becoming really worse. So, the raw image, the JPEG. You can play so much more with the raw image in post-production. Now let's move to the night image and for this one, not to waste time, I will use some of my presets. <laughs> I'll drop a link in the description. You can go out and check my presets. For travel videos and photos, they're really good. For that image, I'll directly choose orange and teal. Now let's play a little bit more with the image and see, can we bring it a little bit more? I would push a little bit the lights, not too much. I'm not happy with the temperature though. I would move the slider towards more the blue, but we have to be careful not to make it too blue. And now let's move to the color mixer. Let's reduce the yellow because it shines a lot. We can desaturate it. Yes, definitely something like that. And then... And then we can do something similar with the orange. Let's see the reds. Oh, actually we have some nice reflection here in the building. I like the reds when they're shining more like that. And we can bring it maybe a little bit towards the orange. And then let's play with the texture, clarity or decays. Let's push the texture a little bit. Let's check the decays, how we'll do it. Actually, I like what the decays is doing. And then let's bring the clarity a bit. Okay. Now let's copy the settings to the JPEG and let's see what the JPEG can do. Guys, I think you understand why you should shoot RAW all the time. You can say that it wasn't exactly fair because the JPEG was a little bit lighter. Let's bring the exposure a little bit down, but that still doesn't fix the situation because the image is getting destroyed. It's much harder to work with the colors because you don't have so much information about the whole image. There is something that makes Apple Row very, very special. First, it combines HDR 
and uh, row capabilities. And second, it combines the night mode and the row capabilities. So with the Apple row, you can use the HDR at the same time and you can use the night mode at the same time. At the current moment, that functionality is not available to the third-party applications. The Apple row is not something I was missing before on my phone, but now when I have it, I don't want not to have it ever again. It's something so amazing. As a travel content creator, it's something I really need. Now, don't forget to smile, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and see you in the next video. And drop me a comment. I'm trying to answer all my comments, especially the nice ones. Usually I'm ignoring the bad ones or I pretend that I don't read them.